When I was in my very early teenage years, my family were homeless and bouncing between the spare bedrooms of various church-going folks that we knew. I'd already been introduced to Blizzard's primary product, the real-time strategy game, before through Shadow of the Horned Rat. Link below for my video on that. But it was one day when we were staying at a house of a European family that I got to speaking to their eldest son, who was probably a good decade older than me. And I was telling him about how much I loved this new genre of gaming, even though I'd only played it once and probably didn't have the narrative skills to explain the genre to him. And he looked at me and he said in a sort of trans-European accent, But have you played the orcs and the humans? And I said, having read Lord of the Rings, They're orcs? And that's where my journey playing Blizzard games began. And the last few months is where my journey with Blizzard games ends. Because unless something radically surprising happens, I will never buy a Blizzard title again. So, there's a point where your relationship with anything has to end. And uh, I've gotten to that point with Blizzard at the moment. If you're subscribed to this channel, you probably subscribed due to my Diablo content at the start where I was talking about my worries for the game, my hype for the game, and in hindsight, I was sort of giving backhanded support to the game, which is something I really regret, despite people kind of really liking my content on that. I think I just should have been more straightforwardly negative about it. And you know why? Because I don't trust Blizzard anymore, and while I'm kind of tired of the infinite amount of YouTubers making, oh my god, I'll never trust Blizzard again videos, I'm sort of doing one. Because I'm also tired of watching so many influencers make those videos and then go right back the next time a World of Warcraft um, expansion launches. No, like there has to be a line. There's too many flaws in the company. They charge too much per game. And everything they produce is absolute rubbish. I was hyped for Warcraft 3 Reforged. I'll repeat, I bought Warcraft 3 Reforged. I don't know what else to say. Like, there's there's a breaking point. And from a YouTuber perspective, it would have made a lot of sense for me to keep making Diablo videos. But I'm, I'm just not going to do that route. And I'm sure you know why, because if you recommended my channel, you probably know the state of Diablo 4's in-game, which I was right about, by the way, even though people told me I was wrong. But in this video, I want to talk about why I can't stand Diablo 4 what I think is internally wrong with Blizzard, that they would even turn out a game that works this way. But I'm just not going to cover anything on this channel in the future in a way that could be construed as me encouraging people to buy a game by Blizzard, which that video that, that blew up and got me, what, 200 subscribers overnight, could be construed as. And yeah, I'm done. I'm done. So let's get into it. How did I get into Blizzard games? And uh, why is Diablo 4 the end for me. If you want to see more videos like this or buy me a cup of coffee, like and subscribe, that's enough. And um, let's get into it. So I've played every Blizzard game to death besides maybe Overwatch, which I don't regret. I was master's rank in StarCraft 2. I even took games off some semi-professional people in tournaments. I took that game very seriously at a very dark time in my life and the connection that I have to the StarCraft community is like one of those things that's just like a part of my personality. My memories of playing World of Warcraft are still there in my head every day. I can still remember there was a cleric in our guild that didn't like me and we were trying to down the Lich King and the whole guild was sort of caught in the drama between me and him because he didn't like this loud American and he was an Englishman because I'm, I'm an American in England and I was in an English guild. And when we finally downed the Lich King, I gave my Tom Cruise Top Gun yeehaw yell. And he said to me, you know, old man Banjo, I was waiting for that Top Gun yell the whole time through this fight. And it didn't even bother me. Like my memories of Blizzard games are powerful. And I think a lot of the exploitation of Blizzard's fan base just comes from how powerful our memories are. 
of the amazing games that they created. Heck, I even got pretty high rank on Hearthstone for a guy that doesn't even play TCGs. The games are just good. And we've seen Hearthstone descend, at least from what I've heard. I don't play it anymore. We've seen Warcraft become what it has become. We've seen them abandon the RTS scene and absolutely screw up StarCraft with Heart of the Swarm in a way that the game never recovered from. Blizzard have become a terrible game company. And that's not going to be fixed by being bought by Microsoft if that goes through. So that's why I just won't buy Blizzard games anymore. I won't be emotionally manipulated or gaslighted into this farce. And now on to why I think Diablo 4 in particular is the straw that broke the camel's back. And I want to start with one reason. So I did a video that was very unpopular. In fact, it actually harmed my channel. What people don't know about YouTube, and I work with YouTube channels, I'm a voice actor, I also do analytics, SEO, channel management, that's my job, is that dislikes actually generally don't harm a channel unless they're overwhelming. A 50-50 like-dislike ratio just shows YouTube that what you're saying is very interesting and controversial. As the philosopher Richard Rorty once put it, truth is the most boring thing in human discussion. The more controversial a point is, the more interesting it is, the more people think yes and no. But that video actually got destroyed by dislikes because the Blizzard fanboys just 100% disliked it and it got killed in the algorithm, which is unusual. Because I said I, I thought that Diablo 4's endgame was going to suck. And um, don't don't fight the hype train. Well, Diablo 4's endgame sucks. Um, I won't rehash that here. You can watch 50,000 videos by more successful, better spoken YouTubers than me on how disappointing Diablo 4's endgame is. And they've explored it much more than me and put in... Hundreds of uh, hundreds of thousands of hours. Time's not that long, but hundreds of hours, yeah, certainly. Um, but my disagreement with Diablo 4 is much simpler. I don't like the resource and spend system. And initially, I thought that as the game progressed, much like other Diablo games, particularly Diablo 2, initially, that is very much a resource spend system. You have mana, health, spam, uh, health potions and mana potions, to be able to use more abilities. But as the game progress progresses, there, open, there opens up more ways of playing the game. Same with Path of Exile. Path of Exile, initially, you're like, that hit, 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 spin mana, drink potion, hit, hit, hit. And then you open up new ways of playing the game, ways of diversifying the game. Well, that just does not happen with, with Path, of Exile, uh, Path of Exile. That does not happen with Diablo 4. It is a resource spin, resource out game. That's it. And all the modifications to your character, if you know anything about game design or just math, are ways of maximizing resource in, damage out. Resource in, damage out. And this gets me to my point. Sorry, I'm belaboring it. Blizzard have turned their entire studio into a goddamn Excel spreadsheet. An Excel spreadsheet approved by corporate goons. And you can see it in every game decision they make. That's why Overwatch 2 got canceled. Because the corporate goons have a money spreadsheet. But they also, they're not just using the spreadsheet for that. Not enough investment. No reason to invest in Overwatch 2. Too much time per dollar spent on game dev. But they're even taking that model now and putting it into game balance. That's it. There's no creativity. They make games based on a spreadsheet. And their art designers, all the money they put into graphic design, all the money they put into having amazing voice actors, it's not going to cut the final problem. The final problem is that at the level of project management, they are a financial company that make games the way people that do finance make things. And for me, I don't want that, and I'll never buy it again.